Hi, Rama. It's week 34, day four of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we are in Daniel chapter four. We see something remarkable taking place here in the life of Nebuchadnezzar. Now we've read about Nebuchadnezzar. He's been in the background, sometimes in the foreground of many of the chapters we've read the last several weeks uh, because he's the king of Babylon. Babylon has been a great threat and has ultimately overtaken God's people. God has used Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. Remember we saw that uh, even though Nebuchadnezzar was not willingly serving God, God says, no, I'm in control of all things. He's my servant, and God used him to punish his people Israel. He's overtaken and defeated all of them. But now something remarkable happens. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, this, this section of Daniel is actually written in Nebuchadnezzar's own hand. It seems that Daniel has compiled this, and uh, he's included this section from Nebuchadnezzar written in the first person there. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar says, look, I got to tell you a story. I got to tell you about this dream that I have. First, he actually begins by praising the most high God, uh, speaking of the one true and living God. And then he says, I got to tell you about this dream that I had. And you can read about it in the details there. But ultimately he says, look, I know that Belteshazzar, remember that's what he renamed Daniel, says this guy, he can answer it for me. So he brings in Daniel, tells him the dream, and Daniel interprets it for him. And uh, at that time, but, uh, Nebuchadnezzar doesn't pay a lot of attention to it. Daniel tells him, listen, my counsel to you is break off your sins. Stop practicing iniquities, practice righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there might be uh, perhaps a lengthening of your prosperity. Daniel says, look, here's what you need to do, King Nebuchadnezzar. But notice that he doesn't do it. For 12 months, an entire year passes, and one day Nebuchadnezzar, he's walking on the palace a rooftop, and he's surveying all his greatness, the glory uh, of his kingdom. And then um, he, he says something boastful, and God speaks from heaven and saying, oh no, the kingdom has departed from you. What the dream uh, that was given to him that Daniel has interpreted, now it's going to come to pass. And Nebuchadnezzar, for seven years, grazes in the field like a wild animal. Uh, it says that the dew of heaven uh, fell on his body, his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws. Uh, what a sight for the great king of Babylon. This goat goes on for seven years. But then, at the end, Nebuchadnezzar says, I lifted my eyes to heaven, my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. Somehow, in all this process, God gets a hold of Nebuchadnezzar, and God saves Nebuchadnezzar. This wicked king, the one who has been the cause of so much turmoil and judgment in the life of God's people, God not only is faithful to his people by bringing judgment and also preserving uh, that Davidic line, as we've talked about, but God is faithful to save this wicked, evil king. Is there anybody outside the reach of God? If God can save Nebuchadnezzar, he can save anybody. And Nebuchadnezzar closes this section, this letter, this memoir of what's happened to him again by praising God. What an encouragement to us in this day and any believer in any day that God is sovereign over all things and he can save anybody. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.